A BBC investigation has revealed how conspiracy theorists are spreading falsehoods about UK terror attacks and tracking down survivors to their homes and workplaces to see if they are lying about their injuries. One survivor of the Manchester Arena bombing is preparing legal action against a man who says he spied on victims. The investigation was for BBC Panorama and a Radio 4 podcast by disinformation and social media correspondent Mariana Spring. It was a large blast from the left-hand side. Lisa Bridget is a survivor of the 2017 Manchester Arena terror attack. It's taken her years to come to terms with her injuries. Two years later, a conspiracy theorist turned up at the boatyard where she worked, posing as a customer with the aim of secretly recording her to see if she was lying about her injuries. They've got no right to do what they've done, taking our stories individually and ripping them apart. Today I've started off on my journey to go around all of these places. That conspiracy theorist is called Richard D. Hall. He's described online how he tracked down Lisa and other Manchester Arena survivors because he thinks the attack was staged. He makes money from promoting his theories in talks, online videos and even a book. Mainstream corporate media with its Such conspiracies echo those of Alex Jones, the host of the conspiracist site Infowars. This month, he was ordered to pay nearly $1 billion to families of the Sandy Hook school shooting in the US after falsely claiming the attack was a hoax. Now, messages seen by the BBC show how online abuse citing these kinds of conspiracies have been sent to those affected by UK terror attacks. A representative survey of 4,000 people carried out by King's College London suggests the pandemic has made this worse, with a third saying it's made them more suspicious of official explanations of terror attacks. A fifth think terror victims are not telling the truth about what happened to them. Those people who are susceptible to conspiracy beliefs uh, have been uh, egged on in some sense because of COVID. We were all stuck in our homes, online, desperate for information. After the BBC flagged that videos promoting false claims about the Manchester attack remained on YouTube, it removed Hall's channel and another promoting this content. YouTube said its hate speech policy prohibits content that denies, trivialises or minimises violent historical events. But there are survivors who want more accountability than that. Here, Richard Hall is describing how he's going to put a camera outside the home of Eve Hibbert, who was seriously injured in the Manchester attack, to see if she can in fact walk. Her father, Martin, was also seriously hurt in the attack. I'm all for freedom of speech and all that, but it, it crosses the line. You know, when you're saying I'm an actor or, you know, I, I've not got a spinal cord injury or, you know, Eve's not disabled, she's not in a wheelchair. Martin is now preparing to bring libel action against Hall, inspired by the Sandy Hook families. It's here, it's here. I visited the market store where Hall works. He insists I'm wrong about how he operates. I just want to ask you, you're selling books here, you've got your DVD, you know, you're profiting from the worst day of these people's lives. Do, do you, do you realise that? Do you know, how does that make you feel? Well, if you read my book, it's all, all the answers are in there. But I, right? I have looked at your book and, mm -hmm. and, and in there, there are claims about the victims right. that are contrary to I, the evidence. Richard Hall has since posted a new video saying he didn't put a camera outside the home of Eve Hibbert, but he admitted to leaving a camera rolling in his van parked in a public place. He says his door-to-door -door inquiries are polite and he can't be held responsible for people sending abuse online. In 2019... But for the survivors, they remain fearful of the conspiracies that he and others promote. Mariana Spring, BBC News.